It's time to get on point, man. We done stumbled enough, man. Oh, We've been chilling hard enough. It's time to get on point. Everybody get in position, please. Man your positions. It's time to go to work, goddammit. You're having too much fun. That's your problem. All right, you ready? Play me some Pippin, man. The show don't start until I play me some Pippin, man. Let's get it in. You feel me? Man, let's get it in. Play you some Pippin. This your intro music, bro. You see how dope it is? We just rolled this shit out for you, man. <laughs> That's yeah. a good thing, huh? You should walk to the stage music type shit. Yeah. Where you from? Dallas, Texas, baby. Not the D town? Dallas, Texas, Oak Cliff, America to be exact. Already. Already. I ain't know you from Dallas. I would have played some of that goddamn Big Tuck or some of that Tom Tom. Yeah. DSR, Fat Bastard. Nigga. Oh, yeah. You feel me? You talking heavy yeah. culture. The rope, man. Come on, man. You talking heavy culture. Yeah. It's crazy, cause like I say, uh, when I was just telling you about Guwa, you know, I missed all that era. I been, you know, I did. What you was fucking with on the street? What was you, what man, was you riding uh, around getting it to? Man, I grew up on, on uh, Mr. Pookie, Mr. Lucci. Lay it down on the crook. Yeah, line. you know what I'm saying? Them niggas go crazy. Yeah, grew up on uh, SUC, Lil' Key, them. Oh, screw you it up, You know what I'm saying? Backpack, ghetto dreams, you know. Okay. I left when I was, so. I was in and out the system from about 11, just going through the juvenile thing. But when I hit what right you at do 17, at 11 that got you in trouble. At 11? Yeah, 11. We at the mile still. Still. <laughs> no plan or nothing, just still. Yeah, but I be I ain't gonna lie to you. The first time I hit a lick was my mama turned me on to it. Real talk. You know I'm baptized as far as the streets go. My mama them, you know that's just how we come up. My mama ain't, hey, look out. I got this boy up in here, man. Uh, he's scary, he ain't gonna do nothing. You be acting gangster, uh, just pointed at him, man. Yeah, man, Vicky, uh, man, Vicky, hell, man. Man, that shit too good, man. <laughs> I ain't never heard nobody say no shit like that. Yeah, nah, my mama, man, Your mama you know, put you on your first lick. Man, my mama put me on my first lick as a kid. Damn. Yeah, tell me. You hear shit, Jay Wins? Bro, we can't just let this shit go to waste, man. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Woo! Welcome back. This is one of them special edition joints. I had to make sure I popped in on an off day to grab this one. You feel me? Because the story too good. The shit too deep. Already. Man, we got a real... Ghetto legend in here with us today. Cause you know that's the theme that we running with. That's the name of the tour. We got a real life ghetto legend in here with us today. And when we use the term ghetto legend, it's really just somebody who made their way out the hood and still thriving with it. You feel what I'm saying? We did the background on your story. We got, and you got a hell of a story. I'm gonna go on jump into some of this shit right here. You know, spent 13 years in jail, in prison, not jail, prison. You know, got books out. Successful trucking company. People been tagging me in all your posts and telling me and sending me your clips and telling me to get you on the show. Welcome to the trap. Boss man Bruce there here with us today. I got a few more highlights on here. You know, I'm gonna make sure that they uh, that they know. You know, you're the owner of Brewster Logistics LLC, uh, Brewster Trucking Company 101. Uh, you teach courses about actually, you know, helping, you know, convicted felons get into the trucking business and things like that, right? Right, so now what I do is I got courses on helping people get into the hot shot trucking. Hot what shot What I trucking. do with the convicted felons is, you know, when they get out of prison, hey man, I pull up on them, grab them, take them to my yard. You know what I'm saying? I give, I give them that impact, that value shock. What made you take that chance right there? Putting the inmates in my truck? Yeah. They ain't inmates no more. They, just, well, <laughs> they fell it. They fell it. Nah, nah, nah. But uh, what made me did it, uh, <clears throat> man, somebody took a chance on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got a partner, man. He had a candy red Camaro. You know what I'm saying? On forges. He got big boy chains, grid out. So I'm trying to figure out, man, what you got going on? Man told me he don't do number drive trucks. I was fascinated with that. Yeah. I couldn't believe he was really living like this from just. Driving trucks, I'm like, hey, I need to tap in with that. Right. 
Man, I locked in and went from there. I went to seeing how lucrative it was. I'm like, man, uh, my partner's coming home. This the play right here, bro. Before we even get into the truck and take me back, take me back to, like you said, we already didn't got to the first lick, 11, 11 years old. Right. Okay, so then what? Out from there, you know, man, where I'm from, man, I'm gonna play with that pistol. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was hitting licks as a youngster. Right. I often tell people when I went to prison, I went to prison for four aggravated robbers with deadly weapons and four aggravated assaults with deadly weapons. God damn. That, but check this out. When they caught me, that was the first time I got caught. It wasn't the first time I had done it. Oh. I had been, you know, playing like this since middle school. Yeah. Like I say, I come up around it. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was taught how to get money. Shit, that's a hell of a one to get caught on, though. Yeah, man, it was a lick gone bad, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, it wasn't even my, wasn't even my lick. I was trying to go to the house. I'm trying to help somebody else. Right. That's how I go, though. I took a file, and I tell people, you know, I don't advocate going to prison, but, man, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. What make you say that? Because everybody say that for different reasons. What make you say that? Man, if I didn't go to prison at the rate I was going, I was going to either get smoked or either I was going to have a life sentence. You know what I'm saying? I was really living like that. I'm really, I'm really playing with that iron like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, man, at a young age, I've been losing my partners. Yeah. Yeah. My big homie got killed hitting the lick. So, you know, I, I know the severity of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So you went down, did your time. At what point did you come up with your plan for going home? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, man, when I was in prison, say this is a crazy story because, you know, my first few years in prison, I spent my time fighting, getting into it with the laws, all this old stuff. So I made it to population by accident, by default. They had some kind of ride or something out there. But if you hadn't been in trouble for like over six months, they let you out, the, uh, out of medium custody and let you go to population. So this is my first time ever going to population. You know what I'm saying? They get to come out the cells all day. They got jobs. I'm like, damn, y'all ain't told me. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> it's a law man working over here. I'm cussing the law man out. He, he wanted to write me a case for something. I'm cussing him out, though. When he come out to pick it, I'm going out. So my partners, they like, say, look out in the K, chill. I'm like, nah, bro. I just got out of lockup. You know what I'm saying? He finna write me a case. If I'm finna go back to lockup, I'm finna rip. My partner say, say, man, that law man, he bringing that work in to your bro. I said, say that again. He said, yo, bro, your big brother that you run with around here, that raised you, that law man, he bringing him in working here. He say, when y'all go to child, holler at him. Your homeboy can get the case pulled. I'm like, hell nah. I'm like, nah, he ain't messing with my bro. They like, man, K, I'm telling you, man, you tripping, let the law man make it. So I'm like, all right. When they call out for last child, wait on my big bro. I'm, I'm standing in the highway, I'm chilling. I just don't believe that this, because in my mind, if the law man was doing all this for him, I know he'd be breaking bread with me. I'd be good. I don't go to commissary. I ain't got nothing up in here. You know what I'm saying? He come down the highway. I'm like, damn, bro. Let me holler at you. He like, what's up? I'm like, man, I just got a tour with the law man down here, man. They uh, he talking about writing me up. I tell him the law man name. He say, yeah. I say, man, they talking about that show mule. So he look at me. He say, man, come here, little bro. He took me around <laughs> the corner. He say, let me holler at you, little bro. Hell yeah. So we go around the corner, I'm like, what's up? He say, man, listen, little bro, man, um, man, I'ma tell you this, you know I love you, man. You know you my little nigga, you know I love you. I say, yeah. He say, yeah, that's my law. He, you know what I'm saying, he be bringing work in. He say, bro, we can't tell you, bro. He say, cause you will get us caught. He say, bro, you ain't nothing but a rider. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta leave you to, to deal with this right here, the, the gangster shit. This is what you good for. Cause little bro, we suddenly have phones, dope, we suddenly have anything going on. You gonna be out here trying to fight somebody, cussing the laws out, you drawing all kind of heat. When he telling me this, it's hitting me like a ton of bricks. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you a whole clown. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you a whole clown. All this is going on right here in your face and you don't even know what the fuck is going on. 
you a real live clown. You around here fighting and tripping. You you thinking this what's up? Man, that, that, that was the beginning of the changing process for me. Bro had really, he had really like broke, broke, broke me mentally when he was telling me this. This is somebody I look up to. Man, he tell me to whoop this man I pop. Why I trip out of here behind this man at the drop of a dime? I've been in here ripping, you know, this is how I'm living in here. But when he told me that, he was like, that's all you good for. He say, man, you a rider, bro, you know what I'm saying? So we use you for this. That was the beginning when, uh, while I was incarcerated. That's when I started really, you know, kind of looking at the game. Telling myself, you need to get your shit together. You ain't what you really think you is. Real talk, that, that's, that was the beginning point. Cause I was, I was like, if you really- So that, that one conversation made you look at the whole world there. Man, he, homie had rocked my whole, my whole existence telling right. me this, sir. Man, this somebody, I'm a, I'm a doffer up in here. Man, I'm a doffer bro up in here. Whatever, whatever bro, it don't even matter if he right or wrong. Whatever bro talking about, this what I'm on. I told you I only made it to, to population by default. Right. This is how I'm living. So when he pulled me to the side, and this the cold part, man, I would have bet my life. When these dudes in here telling me, chill, bro, your, your big bro, that's, I would have bet my life that they was lying. Cause I'm like, if this was going on, I would know about it, obviously, right? Nah, big bro told me we gotta shake you on that. That's when I started understanding why people were staying away from me. You loud, you drawing attention, you drawing heat, homie. We over here getting money. It's a business too, to even to the prison shit. E even though it's it's on a minute level, cause it's business, because you in prison. But that's when I started seeing. You wondering why these, why these boys over here don't mess with you. Homie, ain't no telling what they got going on. You finna bring the hoes. But like I say, when I'm going through the door, I'm thinking this what's up. I'm rapping. I'm all in. Where you from? Who your people? Yeah, we don't know you, man. Check, check. Uh, this this how we rocking. That's what I come up under. So this why, this why I'm living like that. But when bro told me that, he shouted me. I feel like a, I mean, I, like I say, I feel like a clown. I was like, damn, all this going on right here in front of you, you don't even know what's going on. But you this big bad ass nigga. You square, you, 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 you square, you square business up in here. You don't even know all this going on right here before you in your eyes and you ain't seeing nothing. They using you. They use you when it's time to go do some fighting and the dumb shit. Mm. Yeah. So at that moment right there, change how you start doing your time. That's, that's, that's how I started. That's where the change came in at. What made it solidified and official is my little brother getting killed. Mm. So Why I you had, locked up? What, my little, so I got a little 16-year-old brother, Lil Juicy. Lil Juicy the legend. You know, Lil Bro, Lil Bro, he lived like that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I was in prison. This the cold part, you know, my little brother used to write me. And you know what I'm saying? He'll write me crossing out letters, hitting up the hood. I'm thinking that's what that is, you know what I'm saying? So we go to Rick, I be bragging to my partners. I take the letter out there, yeah, look at this here. This what we breeding where I'm from. This how me and mine's getting down. Yeah, I got my little bro out there ripping. I'm showing him the letters, letting, you know, I'm doing this, showing him, you know what I'm saying, where I'm from. I'm really from Wood Time. You know, this how we really rocking, my little bro out there ripping. <clears throat> Not even two, three weeks later, man, I get a phone call, they tell me come to that chaplain office. Lil bro 16, they smoking. Lil bro ain't number 16 years old. They call me to the chaplain office. Hey man, uh, your sister and them, they need to holler at y'all. What's up? Shit, they killed Juicy. Yo, that's what made everything official. That's what really just rocked the boat. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting in prison and I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Like, they, they done smoke Lil bro. Like, this is what you led, this is what you bred right here. You supposed to be big bro, you done got little bro smoke on some clown shit. That's how I was looking at it, that's when, that's why all these different things was hitting me like, nah homie, this ain't, this ain't what's up, you just got little bro smoke, like in real time.
We start playing with that old man. That old man probably on no, half of St. Louis. Hey, old, no hey, hey, old school, old school. Do you have diabetes? Hi, hi. How you doing? How are you, man? Hey, 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 nice to meet you, sir. How was your name, sir? Big Dick. Big. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! To your sentence where you in that I was right at six years. Cause it happened in 06. I got locked up in 2000. So yeah, right at six years. Right at six years. That's when that happened. I had just caught a case in the penitentiary. If you notice, it say I done 13, but I was I was sentenced to 10 years. I picked up time down there. Damn. That's right when all that was taking place, when little bro got smoked. But that's when I really start seeing, like, you know what I'm saying? This ain't even the play right here. You misleading the homie. We gotta stop giving the little homies bad game. That was bad game I was giving little bro. Cause, cause with who I am now and the game I got now, my little bro was here, man. He be four, five trucks in. He be traveling the world. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't be, he, he wouldn't be living like that. Cause I've been done showed him it's a different way. And I know the influence I got over Lil Bro. Lil Bro gonna do what I say. Right. Damn. Lil Bro gonna do what I say do. That's just like, you know what I'm saying? You got little cousins right now. You can call. Hey, man, what, what this, you know? You big bro, you unk. They look up to you. I think a lot of the big homies, you know, you be, you uh, misuse your influence, homie. Now, by no means am I saying that, you know, not to protect the household, not to protect the legacy, not to, you know, we, we, ain't, uh, we ain't doing no folding, but we ain't gonna put ourselves in no predicaments that we ain't gotta be forced in. On no dumb shit. On no dumb shit. Right. You risking it all for some dumb <clears throat> shit. I can't tell you how many times I done sat on the wreck yard with two or three of my partners, they got life sentences, and this, I, I always remember they, this is what they say. Damn, bro. I tripped out. Man, that shit wasn't even worth it, bro. You know what I'm saying? That shit, man, I'm, a two minute decision, a one minute decision done cost me the rest of my life. In the heat of the moment, you know what I'm saying? Anything can happen in that heat of the moment. That's them danger zones, that's why I stay away from them. You know, that's the importance of knowing self. Right. I know, so I, I'm gonna stay away from certain people, places, and things. For what? I know if you, I know if you get out of line with me, what's gonna happen? I often tell people that's why I don't believe in carrying a pistol. It ain't got nothing to do. It, it, it ain't got nothing to do with the police. I'm scared that if I really get mad, that I'm gonna shoot you, homie. So it's just best for me not to have that gun, cause I know in the heat, in the heat of the moment, and I'm really mad. I'm really in my feelings and I really feel like you done done something to me or violated me, bro, I'ma shoot you. <laughs> so to avoid that, you know what I'm saying? I don't need no pistol. I'm not even living it like that. You know what I'm saying? I be looking at it from the standpoint if something happened to me, that's what God had in plan for me. I stay away from people, places, and things that's living like that. I feel you, man. Is that how we got to the book? Man, the book, I ain't gonna even lie to you, that was just a uh that was just an idea. Right. Had I known that book was gonna do what it done done for me, in hindsight, I probably would have put way more into it. But the but it being so simple is what makes it so powerful. 
You know what I'm saying? When I wrote book one, man, I wrote it sitting in my homeboy, uh, in my homeboy truck, now country boy, sitting in his car. You know what I'm saying? On the laptop. I was so fascinated with the fact that at the click of a button, I got access to eight <clears throat> million people, eight billion people. So I was like, man, I gotta put something online. Right. Yeah, let me write something, you know what I'm saying? Let me figure out. all this shit was happening while you was locked up, right? Yeah, I, I wasn't here for the internet and all that stuff. So when I'm getting out and I'm seeing like, What's Damn. the first shit you was fucking with when you got on the internet? Uh, YouTube. The shit that just blew your mind. Uh, well, of course, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you know, you see that in prison or whatnot. Right. But the fact that I was able to, uh, that YouTube, I was a heavy reader in prison. Right. I done read every book in prison from <clears throat> politics, history, science, religion, What's economics. What's some of the ones that stuck with you, the books? Uh, the main one is the autobiography of Malcolm X by Alex, uh, Haley. By Alex Haley. Yeah. Uh, that one book alone, you know what I'm saying, hands down, The Spirit of a Man by Ayana. Uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, yeah. you know, granted the art of war, those type of things are given, but um, uh, what other little books? Hustle and Win. How to Hustle and How Win. How to Hustle and Win. Did you uh, read two? Who? He read part two. Part two, I, I didn't uh, necessarily like part two as much as I did. Because it's way different part, from part it's, one. Yeah, it's, way, it's two way different uh, contexts, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's, yeah. But book one, yeah, that's it. One is one that you want to just read over and over. Yeah, over that's again. it. Yeah. And it's broken down in, in, in simple form. Yeah. The translation. Yeah. That's why I tell people about what we do. You got to be able to speak the language. You trying to talk to me like you, uh, I ain't go to Harvard, so I don't comprehend your wordplay. Talk to me, give it to me like this here, break it down in the lowest common denominator. Right. I need you to feed it to me on my level, that don't make me no less than you. It's just we speak two different languages. Yeah. You said that the book put you on, what, what did it necessarily do that showed you some shit, some other shit was out there? The book? Yeah. Man, bro, that book done got me in some rooms I can't even believe. Yeah. Man, I be chilling with, so I do book events with the governors, city officials, wardens. Right. I, I just get a chance to do- The same laws. The same laws. <laughs> ain't you that shit me? crazy, but it's, it's, it's different when you ain't got shit to have from them folks. When you ain't a criminal and you can look them folks in the face and say, shit, I'm, I'm legit. Oh yeah, man, it's a beautiful, but it's, I'ma show you something, I will say this. I'm gonna force you to respect it. Exactly. I ain't looking for the respect. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna, I want you to fully be aware of who I am and what we putting in the culture. So when I go in these rooms, my boy Dunk I always tell me, hey Brewster, no compromise. I be like, nah, bro, you know I need to probably do, hey, look out, bro. No compromise. Yeah. So I always go in all these rooms as myself, and it's always a success. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I keep hearing you say your phrase, big reform, man. Explain to the people that's watching right now about that big big reform and what that means to you, what that is, and what that's, what's that's doing in, in your movement. Man, big reform is drastic, massive change. My people, we eat with our eyes. So it's important that what we're seeing, we, we able to digest it. So when you're seeing homie riding in that candy, that candy lack, you need to understand you can get that candy lack with good credit. Right. You understand me? So Bro, you know who I think you would enjoy having a conversation with? Who? Derek Grace. Uh, uh, Cause y'all got the same passion about independence and change and actually standing on principle. I think y'all would have a very interesting conversation. I don't heard that name, Derek Grace. Derek Grace, the, he, he's the financial guy. With and the, he from Florida? He got tattoos all over. He yeah. from Florida or yeah. something? Yeah, I think, yeah, I I heard think you and him should definitely connect on some shit. Uh, yeah, man, I'm telling you. Because he, he be on the same shit. Hey, man, I'm, the big reform movement is drastic, massive change, man. I'm trying to touch the culture and show the culture, hey, baby, we can look good, we can have the chains and the J's, we can do all that elaborate, elaborate things and do it on this side of the tracks. Right. They getting paid billions of dollars off our ignorance. Right. These people are, are investing in prisons. They are, they are betting that you're going to get up tomorrow and commit a crime. What's the biggest lesson you learned in prison? The biggest lesson I learned in prison. Now, that's interesting because I learned a lot of lessons. That one, though. That one lesson that if I say. If you had to sum it all up. 
the importance of your character and your name. Right. <clears throat> if I had to sum up the, the biggest lesson I learned in prison, no, no water. Uh, was nah the importance of your name. Your name mean you everything down. There. Man, your name mean everything down there in the system. I'm, it's gonna carry you everywhere. That's the re That's how I got the eighty five south. I drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, 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 tell me about. Let's take a pivot. Tell me about when you first saw success in the trucking industry. What What was that moment? First success. Uh, so I won't say the first success. Uh, I've been so in, 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 in engaged in running the business. I haven't. I don't believe I've seen the success yet. Word. You know, mm -hmm. Now I don't believe I've seen it. I, I believe that the uh, the ceiling, ceiling is. Like Michael Jordan said, the ceiling is the roof. Yeah, the ceiling is the roof, you know. <laughs> so right now, I don't necessarily think I done seen some success. I believe that I figured out how to sustain a lifestyle and take care of myself. Right. I don't realize that it's a, a certain skill set, a certain foundation, financial foundation, right, those then, things. When you start enjoying it then? Uh, when did you get to that it. moment where you was like, the first moment where you can enjoy some of the fruits of your labor. Going from prison, doing 13, however long. Right. And then you get that moment where it's like, ain't no way I went from that to doing what the fuck I'm doing right now. I'm really, uh, I can't believe this moment right I now. I can give you that. Uh, the first time I seen the Statue of Liberty in New York. Right. I was in an 18 wheel. I couldn't believe it. I started crying. For real? Man, I'm talking about I started I could count on, on my hand how many times I done cried in my life. Uh, it was the first road trip in an 18 wheeler, and uh, I'm driving, you know what I'm saying? I'm entering New York, you know, them streets up there, they different. So if you don't know how to maneuver that truck and trailer, young man, you got That's the first place I went when I left here. Yeah, you got to, if you can, if you can drive a semi truck in New York City, you can go anywhere in the world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But man, I'm driving, I'm looking for it. I don't see it, I'm kind of like, ah, this ain't. Man, I seen that, I was in such awe, I was like, damn, bro. You know what I'm saying? You was yeah. just in prison. Yeah, that, that's, that's the first time where I was just like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Being, traveling for me has been, if, if anything, as far as being able to enjoy myself, the traveling. That's, people don't understand that. Like, when they hear traveling, it's not just packing up some shit and going somewhere, man. Traveling, it, it literally stretches you as a person, man to go and see shit that you didn't seen on TV or on T-shirt or on postcard and you actually right there and you see that these people live in the same country you live in but shit totally different. They yeah. eat different, their women look different, their cars is different, but it's the same though. Right. You get what I'm saying? It's like you have to go see that shit just to know that it's way more shit and ideas and thoughts than you. Yeah. That's living. Yeah, oh no. Nah. That's really how I enjoy the fruits of my labor, being able to travel. Yeah. Yeah, I done been to Jamaica, Cancun. You fuck with it? Yeah, man, I, anywhere. I, I, I go everywhere. I done been to the mines. For real? Yeah, that's one of the seven wonders of the world. I went out there to the pyramids. You know, traveling, that's what I'm big on. Yeah. I had never, been, before I went to prison, I had never in my life left outside my neighborhood. Yeah. The only place I had ever been was to prison. So, you know, I've been reading all these books all these years. Seeing all this shit. You know what I'm saying? To get out and, and pull up at the 4040 Club or pull up in Memphis and go see where uh, MLK got killed or yeah. go over there to MLK. I was just kind of like blown away by that it. That blue water fuck a nigga up, man. When you see that blue ass <laughs> water for the first time. Yeah. It's heavy. Man, you just can't even imagine <laughs> that shit, man. You heard about it. But then you see that shit. That shit really look like hypnotic when you flying over the island, nigga. Yeah. They're like, nigga, that water blew in the motherfucker. That's how they know you ain't been nowhere, because I don't give a fuck. If you a project nigga and you go see that blue water, you when you look at that motherfucking window on that plane, you go say it out loud. Man, that water blew in the motherfucker. <laughs> it's just going to come out. It's just like your yeah. ancestors know you ain't never seen that shit yeah. before. Nah, man. Now that traveling yeah. heavy, man, I think that's the best investment. Go to Germany, man. See, I ain't made it to the... Go to, the, to Germany. I'm telling every black man that got some money. Go to Germany. Go to Germany. German women love black men. They will tie your fucking shoe. Oh, You my. just walk down the street. A white woman will walk up to you and tie your fucking shoe. Oh, man. Oh, I, man. So the economy must not just be that... Man, it's like they know some shit that we don't know, bro. It's like... <laughs>
Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. Sunday, November the 5th, we will be at the Neil Blaisdell Arena in Honolulu, Hawaii. Me, DJ d Rick, Esther Koo, DC Young Fly, and Rip Michaels. Make sure you grab those tickets. Thursday, November 10th, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at the Carlos Miller Theater. That's the Miller Highlight. Oh, well, you Miller, you, you and you live in the Highlight, so it's still your theater. Carlos Miller Highlight. It's still your theater. That's a good it. stop all the way. Hey, look, return to Get Old Legends, Come November on. 10th, man, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Wisconsin. We coming. Wisconsin. You know what I mean? Hey. Yeah, you It's ready. definitely going to be cold in Milwaukee. It did. November, November 10th, yeah, but I'm we coming. I'm snow boots. Yeah, we coming. November 10th. We're going to bring the heat to Milwaukee. No cap. Return to Get Old Legends tour. Milwaukee, you know, Milwaukee, Milwaukee smile Wisconsin. Heat. You know, Smile Heat is the bitch. What? You know, Smile Heat is the bitch. Hey, and all the little, <laughs> all the little freaks, <laughs> all the little freaks from Kenosha gonna come over there too. Yep, they sure is. Well, you, you know, already know. Oh. Kenosha, Washington, Kenosha. come through November 10th. We at the Miller Highlight Theater. Yeah. What kind of heat is They the Smile Heat. They got the, in their bedroom. I'm paying five, five bills. If you need your lights on, contact 85 South. No, contact DC Young Fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the small heater. <laughs> November 10th, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Miller High Life Theater. Get your ticket. And we're going to give out some space back. heaters because we know yeah, them chicks sleep in the cold exactly. ass bedroom. No cap on the pallet. I do want to talk about this a little bit. Do you feel like it's because what is kind of celebrated in music? Because, you know, sometimes people do look at it like that. Like, it's cool to be a shooter. You know, I got my op. Like, it's celebrated in the music. I don't necessarily think it's celebrated, though. I just think that people be talking, a lot of people just be talking about their real life experiences. Right. I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm a, like, slick spiritual person. And, yeah. and I believe, you know, like, in terms of, like, the Bible reading and what it says, I do believe it's not void. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that words are powerful. Yeah. yeah. I think that words, like, I think that... As much like if you believe in manifestation, if you believe that you can sit here and be like, I'm a, I'm gonna have a big bag tomorrow, mm -hmm. and you say that every day, and you feel like you can manifest that right. into your reality, you know what I'm saying? You be can have it. The thing you can have it, right? But also be able to understand like that our words still have power. Adolf, like my friends, y'all, like my friends, I be like, he's so busy, like, I just don't, but he got a good heart. They be like, is his heart fucking you? I'm like, basically. Yeah. <laughs> The motherfuckers will cry when you leave, bro. German people love some black folks. I can't say all of them, but the ones that be outside and see niggas, they just, they, man, they want to take you everywhere and show you everything and make sure you good. Go over there. Right. They just treat niggas different. I'm talking to black men, niggas. I, don't, I ain't telling everybody. If you a real nigga and you go over there, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You ain't got to see shit extravagant. Just go over there and be a nigga and watch what happens. You will not believe it. <laughs> we the most hated motherfuckers on earth, but I'm telling you, it's something about Germany. They, they just like niggas over there, especially them women. Oh my. All types of big ass white German girls named Gretchen and shit over there. <laughs> Dying to make you some waffles and shit. Nah, but go over there, you'll see. <laughs> he said go over there. Just go over there. Mm -hmm. I hope somebody who's watching this goes over there and come back and who's been there? Just get in the comments and, t and black men need to know this type of shit. This is the information we need to be sharing amongst each other. We need to know every place that we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so I believe in, uh, I go where I'm appreciated, never where I'm tolerated. Don't tolerate me, goddammit. Yeah. Appreciate me. I go where I'm appreciated, yeah. you know. That's the inner circle. Yeah. Yeah. I think you gotta do that. If you ain't doing that, you ain't I mean, valuing yourself. That, well, let's, let's take it back even further. Be somebody that people appreciate. Hold on, what you mean? Be somebody that people appreciate. There's a lot of people out here that have a very unpleasant presence. They energy? They, it's not even their energy, they mindset. They loud and wrong about everything in life. You know what everybody else is supposed to do. Oh, well, they should. Why you ain't do it? You know something better than then whatever everybody else has, you always know you some shit that's better. Ahead of, ahead you, all, you know somebody who got some shit better. Oh, they should have did this. Well, why they didn't do it like this? Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, you criticize When you live like that and you got to criticize everything somebody else doing, you ain't never going to have shit. 
Just like them people that sit on the internet all day and try to keep up with who did what and who had this surgery and who fucking with who. What are you doing? Who fucking you? <laughs> who is fucking you? That's the only shit you need to be concerned about. And then they wonder why people can make money off of their private lives. Because motherfuckers like you will sit there and discuss every detail of it. Oh, they lie? Exactly. If you put it on social media, man, it's, uh, it's up for grabs. That's the thing about it. It's people who don't understand the, the importance of social media. It's not like you have to live on social media. But, but so, if you don't have a social media presence, it's a, so, let me hold up. I'm whatever gonna say this you're doing you. is going to suffer. So I got a lot of partners. It, it, it's funny you bring this up because I shoot a lot of content. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I make a lot of content with my trucks, guys coming home. And uh, a lot of them be, you know, they see me out there recording, they be, hey, man, I, 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 ain't, I don't be messing with that camera. I don't be messing That's with that camera. You know why. But, I, but I'm going to show you something. I always tell them. be living right. We, but, but, but this is my play right. This is my thing. If we ain't living like that no more, why are we still falling under them guidelines? Who we hiding from? People they did shit to. So we, Just we, like you said, when you said you didn't want to have a pistol because you were using it. You know how I many motherfuckers out there that went out there and lied and act like they was that type of person and did shit to people who they know they was wrong. Niggas, it ain't about what they did. Niggas' heart is guilty, man. You out here hiding from shit. That you done done in your past. That you did, so you, you ain't living right. That mean a lot of people don't have, like you said, that self-acceptance, that self-approval, that self-love. A lot of motherfuckers can't stand to see they self in the mirror. You think I, they want to see this on a man, video? I'm loving on myself. Hey, everybody ain't there yet. I'm, I'm loving on Some me. Some motherfucker go home every night and bend that nigga all day and turn the lights off and cry. For they real? take all that expensive ass shit off and ball up and cry. Well, you nobody that like me. Don't nobody love me. These bitches ain't for real. These bitches ain't we're gonna fuck because I got this money. Where that come from though? Hey man, motherfuckers be empty. Some people out here ain't living who living the life that they really want to live. They doing, they they successful. They got everything, but they not doing what they really want to do. They the, their only motivation is to stay ahead of the next motherfucker. Oh. Some people want money because they seen another nigga with it. They don't want it for themselves. No. They don't have a purpose or no. an agenda behind the money. All they want, they don't give a fuck about this shit. Long as they're ahead of you, it's another motherfucker. That's behind the person who got the money. They so just you don't believe to it's, it ain't no way to fix it? Nope. Ain't no love. You're saying ain't no way to fix this. No, because motherfuckers already know what it takes to be happy. And it ain't about who got the most money. Some motherfuckers are going to do right, some shit. Yeah. Sometimes happiness ain't attached to a value. Yeah, now nah, I'm with you because I know too many of these boys. They act like because they got a bag of money, that make them the big homie. You see a lot of these them, rappers, they come up in the game, right? And then you can tell exactly when they get the money because they change completely. What you they mean, don't China? even sound like the nigga you started listening to. Oh, as soon music. as this money hit, now this nigga making that motherfucking, that, that music they play at Forever 21 now. You know that shit that they play in the depart that department store music. You so he, like, let me ask you this, is the rapper not supposed to change? Nigga, he wasn't making that shit before he got that paper. So I'm saying now that he got the paper, he's still supposed to, as you eat, nigga, elevate and evolve. It been, ain't it, it, ain't nah, it? that's why some niggas can do all kind of music all the time. When you come out and you a goddamn gangster and then you sing about pink lollipops and, and shit like that, where that come from? When you start doing this shit? That's the, uh, uh, to my understanding, this the art, this the entertainment. What I'm saying is, if that's the, you don't evolve to that type of shit, you should have came out doing that shit. From so the words say go. Yeah. So you saying even though you got the bag, you still need to be talking about this. Man, when you got the bag, you have, you, that's what, you, that's what got you the bag. You done sold us all this other shit. You can tell when the album about to be bullshit because they say, I did this one for me. <laughs> well, you should have played that your motherfucking house there. That made me buy this weak ass shit. He said, You can tell when the album finna be some bullshit. Yeah, they all, yeah, I did some real personal to me. I ain't buying that one. <laughs> I want the one you did for the Sorry. streets. <laughs> I, I, I say, I'm going to show you something, dog. That's one of the reasons I'm a fan of Gotti. We subscribing to the streets, man. That's why what I'm putting in he the culture. He ain't never changed up. He ain't never. Well, hey, we. We subscribing to the streets, baby. That's the culture. That's who we looking to touch. Yeah, I like it. Ain't it crazy, though? We want to touch the streets, but the streets really don't fuck with us. No. So the sad part... I mean, the streets is treacherous, man. 
What you mean? Once they see you done changed? No, man. Them streets terrible as fuck. We should rip, like as a black community, we gotta let the streets go. The streets really holding us back. That's why we pushing the big reform for. Exactly. That's why we putting the- Man, fuck the streets. Yeah. I want everybody to leave the goddamn streets. It's time for us but, to leave but, the But street. hold up, if we ain't providing a real- if, So if you want them to change, you gotta give them that bag. No. I'm gonna show you how to get the bag. No, 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 no. So listen, in order for them to leave the streets, there, you, there's going to have to be some a bag involved. I'm going to show you how to get the bag because I know the reason you committing crimes and the reason you doing wrong, bro, is because you want the money. I'm going to show you how you can get the money, but on this side of the tracks. That's what the big reform is. Hey, man. What I'm saying, I feel what you said, but what I'm saying is we have been providing too much too much we 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 like we pitch too much to the hood like you said we should be pitching big reform we gotta let the streets go all right now not i understand people, not, not the, the people, people the, the culture, mentality the mentality we praise too much of the wrong shit. oh yeah i'm with you i told you that's why but I it's got just like as a black man like you said in the streets your last word should be a black man killing you you dig what i'm saying it's like the streets we the only motherfuckers who loyal to the streets and get treated the worst. We don't get nothing in return but heartache and grief and robbery and murder and pregnancy and disease and drugs. Like, and this is the shit that we want to be approved by. Oh, I did it for the streets. The streets don't have nothing for us. The streets waiting on a nigga to fuck up and say, I told you that nigga wasn't shit. The moment yeah, but you if we, fall, don't provide, we don't provide a way for them, they ain't gonna leave. Say the streets is like the like the crack in the 80s. You take a hit of the streets, it's over. You the right. streets is like the crack game in the 80s. Well, you take a hit of that pipe, it's over. It's a drug. So it's, it ain't, it's drug. easy for people like us that's conscious, but them people that's really stuck in that culture, man, I know people that's 40, 50 years old still trapping. They don't know nothing else. They ain't never seen nothing else. Be successful. Make a dollar. They ain't never, they don't know no other way to get money. I'm gonna show you different ways to get money though. I got several partners that got, I got a homeboy that don't do nothing but cut her, eat. I got another partner, he don't do nothing but go to work. Living wonderful. It's several different ways and methods for you to get money, getting your credit together. I just know the streets don't, they, so I didn't know what I know now, I didn't know this then. The streets are not aware of the information. Mm -mm. They not aware of understanding that. See, like you said earlier, a lot of motherfuckers don't understand the business of the streets. You think they in the way, they really out there playing. It's, man, street, the, it's like you said, you could just be outside for free doing dumb shit all motherfucking day. You, it's so much money in the streets that you don't have to do nothing illegal to get. Man, you don't have to do nothing illegal. It's so much free money out here doing, just doing right. You ain't gotta commit no crime. No crime. I know too many people that's committing crimes for the same amount of money you can go down there to that warehouse and get. Homie, you risking everything for the same amount of money that you can just go to this warehouse and work and get that same check and I ain't gotta worry about going to jail or getting robbed, killed or nothing. That's too much like right. And then I know the importance of having that consistent money coming in. Cause if I, when I came home, if you got zero dollars coming in, the likelihood of you committing a crime is extremely high. That's fucking crazy because poverty breeds violence. Poverty breeds violence. Man. This is why I stress to you, hey homie, go get that little bullshit job. I know it ain't paying them, but if you got a few dollars coming in every week, that puts, that stabilizes you. That allows you to be in a position where I don't gotta do nothing drastic right now. I don't have to do nothing drastic right now. Right. But if you got zero dollars coming in, it's getting drastic. A lot of niggas don't live in reality, though. That's the craziest thing to me. Because it's like, even if you had a job that wasn't paying good, you'd rather stand around and have nothing? I don't understand how you have so much pride that you can't get a job, but you can ask a mo another motherfucker for something. Man, I know people that work for free in prison and then come out here and trip about going to work. Man, that's fucking crazy. I'm talking about it because in prison, you're going to work for free. Either way. You come right out here and you don't want no job. I know people that I don't see running whole gang enterprises on the wreck yard. Come out here to society act like he don't know how to fill out the application. 
I don't be understanding it, you know what I'm saying? But I know I know that transition of going from the rec yard to the streets is it, pivotal. Right. Yeah, ignorance yeah. is a choice, though. That's one thing about it. You can choose to be ignorant to the shit that's going on, but I know one thing. If you live in America, you're going to learn about some business because that's all the fuck that's going on around this motherfucker. America is built on business. America is business all day, whether <laughs> you want to look at it or not. That's why it shit be open all day, every day. This is why everybody in America fat as fuck. You can get out your bed and go get you a burger in the middle of the night. That shit open all night. You can do that shit everywhere in the world. Man, you got to get your ass up, man. It's money being made all day, every day. That's called convenience. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Internet done made a lot of people lazy too, though. It damn sure have, man. But I remember when I first started doing comedy, man, I had about four or five jobs. I was just always chasing money. Right. But then at some point in my life, it was like, I realized that you will never get money being paid. You can't just be a fucking paid worker. That's not how you make money. It don't matter what you do. If you just working to get paid, you going to always be a fucking worker. Okay. It's until you understand the process of money. The process is like, this shit has to go through certain channels just to get to you. Yes, it does. It's like, you just a worker. Then you got an assistant manager, then you got a manager, a store manager, a regional manager. That ain't no money coming through. These By the time they get to you, ain't shit left. They don't have no choice but to pay you this little weak ass whatever the fuck. So you need to find a way to get on this goddamn side. So I tell niggas, every time you get a job, bro, you're supposed to learn the fuck out of your job and do it by yourself. Whatever you do at work, you should be able to lead that motherfucker and, and get do paid it on off your own. of it. Yeah. That's Ain't no way I'm finna set. goddamn go ahead and be doing this shit for y'all and don't find me some sad shit to do this at. It's a motherfucker who need this at the, I can, hey, my, hey, I can do this. I do this at work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey man, English Major Merch live right now. ClaytonEnglish.com. Go get you some, man. We got all the HBCU inspired colorways, man. Go get it. You know what it is. Let's go. November 12th. What? Chicago, Illinois. What? Come Shot on, man. Town. Going back to the shot. Come on, man. We going to the shot town. We're going to be at the back Wind the Trust shot Arena. And I trust that the wind will be there November 12th because it's going to be back November in Chicago. Shot Chicago, man. I'm going to get there back. early. It'd be hard as hell to get into them Chicago theaters. No cap. Yeah, 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 you gotta park at the other theater to get into one theater. But yeah, hey, man. make sure you there November 12th. What? Return of the Ghetto Legends Tour, live in Chicago. Y'all been we saying we gotta come back to man. Chicago playing, man. for the longest. We coming back on phone. When y'all coming back to Chicago? On phone. And then back. Hey, 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 hey. Don't say nothing they say up there. We don't know what that's. So I mean, we don't? No. We didn't say it. Don't, don't say it no more. All right, well. All right, November 12th, we're going to figure out what we can and can't say in Chicago at the Winter Trust Arena. Yes. It's a lot of shit. Don't we probably him. can't wear all these bright ass colors. Nah, you just can't we wear your black. Can. Yeah, you can't wear your hat to a certain degree. Well, I'm wearing my shit to the front. I'm So you. Hey, what's up, man? I didn't know you were right there, man. It's your boy, Jack Thriller, a.k.a. Uh, Luke Eyewalker, a.k.a. The Visionary, is going down in a major way, man. That's right, I'm finally here. 85 South, 85 South, 85 South. We're talking about my new show, New Jack Thriller City, man. I got some of all my famous friends coming through from Music Soul Child, RL, Drew Hill, Delicious. Um, it is we're down in a major way, man, and I need you to tune in. Not now, but right now to Channel 85. Make sure you subscribe to New Jack Thriller City on YouTube. New Jack Thriller City on YouTube. I'm telling you, it's gonna be crazy, entertaining from one to done. I'm even giving out relationship advice. So if you need relationship advice, man, make sure you DM me at Jack Thriller. New Jack Thriller City. New Jack Thriller City, live on channel 85. Hey, do I have something in mind? Y'all go to commercial. Don't kiss them hoes in the mouth unless you got to. Let's go. That's that, that's that OJT, on the job training. Right. Yes, sir. I teach people that with truck driving, you need to go work at a company for a little while, baby. 
Yeah, you, you do. Yes, you need to know what's going on. Because you need on. to understand the SOPs, the standard operating procedure. Yes, sir, the so day So you can day. understand how good you got it right here. Huh. Say that again. Yeah, you, you need to understand that. You need to understand that I'm not on your ass. Well, you I'm trying, trying to show business. you how to get this money. But you're going to go over there and let them folk talk to you crazy, and then they're going to pay you crazy, and I'm showing you right here. This Ooh, is what it is. Oh, he talking heavy. What? So I tell people that's one of the perks about working at Brewster Logistics. See, working at that big company, oh, this is what you finna deal with being talked to crazy. You're going to get handled any kind of way. And they finna promise you a bunch of money that you ain't never going to get. You ain't, yeah, this is what's going on over here. But see, when you come lock in at Brewster Logistics, you're treated with respect. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're provided the opportunity to make real money. These are the things that, that take place at my company. This, that's the perk of working at Brewster Logistics. That's, right. that's the perk of me being the person who owns the company. It's built off of this right here. What's your day-to-day -day like at Brewster Logistics? Uh, I'll say uh, by 8 o'clock in the morning, it's going down. I'm already? Dealing with, yeah, it's going down. Truck already inspected. Well, every morning we need to be doing pre-trips. So the yeah. semis, they might not be at the yard, but them hot shots, we need to be doing pre-trips on them trucks and them trailers. I need you to catch the problem before you leave my yard. Because once you leave my yard, a problem that would have cost me uh, $40 or $50, now it's going to cost me four or $500 because we didn't get it fixed before we left. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm big on that pre-trip. Man, you know pre-trip is very important. Imperative. It's imperative, man. <laughs> After doing pre-trip. It could save your life. Yeah, oh, it's going to save your life. <laughs> but after doing pre-trip. Pre-trip inspection. Yeah, I deal with the dispatchers. Make sure all that's rocking and rolling. And then, you know, I be having things going on with my books. Speaking yeah. engagements and yeah. stuff like that. Book signings. So uh, that's Man, the we keep getting day. all these people up here in the trucking industry. Y'all trying to bring me out of retirement. Just say that. Uh, just say that. I well, was one of the coldest. In it? I was one of so the coldest in my you, class. You used to drive? Ask anybody. You used to drive? Bro, come on, man. Hell yeah. Can't hold up, but can you hit the dock? Man, you straight line back and all that. Talk to me. Man, go on. Don't, don't, don't get on here. I ain't no man. trailers. Don't get, Boy, don't get on here cabin. I'm going to put you under the gun. Park the fuck out of flat beds. All that shit. You can shit. put that 53 Peter Bills, Barbos, all uh, that shit, man. How much experience Old you got? Old school Peter how much, how much? I are... ain't looking for no work, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I got my mouth in, baby. I, I, I went through my training and all, all that right. shit with the trainer. All my hours is logged and shit. So basically, if I was, you know, I'm ready to jump. You can jump in it. Come on, man. I, I ain't say saying this, I though. need to be doing no long. I might, I might give me a little. You know the game. You, you need know, to I have might a go truck. get me a. You know, might go get me a little recovery business. Or Man, something. you know the game. You need a truck. The transportation industry is a billion dollar industry. I tell every exactly. street guy I know. I don't care who he is, man. Hey, baby, you need to be buying them trucks like you buying them bricks, baby. Yeah, man. The transportation industry is not going nowhere, no time you soon. You got it sold up. Well, I went to buy some truck. They like, we ain't got no truck, boss oh, man. No, no, no. <laughs> no right. man, but I will tell you this. I'm trying to get me some CDL schools throughout America. What you waiting on? Man, I need them to put the bag behind me. I need to get me some CDL schools around what's, the country. What's the number? Say the number on there. Just say it. Somebody gonna get Let me get three mil. How many you want? How many schools? Yeah. I want about five schools. We need them in all major cities. We're gonna start in Dallas, Atlanta. Get us one up there in Philly, get us one in Cali, and we sure need, need one in Chicago the way they up there killing. We're gonna get we gonna put them we gonna put them in that school. They ain't gonna have time to kill nobody in Chicago when I get through with them. Oh. I'm gonna have them up there working. I'm finna provide you your CDL license, and once you get your CDL license, then baby, we're gonna put you in a truck. Oh, uh, I meant to ask you too. You do you uh give jobs to the to females out of prison also? Man, this is not no biased movement. I cater no, to the men, you women. never hear nobody speak on like programs women, for women fresh out of prison. That's, that's so why the I women, have. So the women is, uh, is a pivotal part of the, of the institution. I work with a lady named Christine Crane. She has one of the biggest reentry programs in the state of Texas for women. See, that's what I'm talking so about. So I, I work with their company. And then I got my homegirl, my sis, Kiara. She the trucking guru. 
You know what Man, I'm saying? Right now be the perfect time for you to drop some contact information. I can't believe we've been talking this long and we ain't dropped it two or three times. What can they, people watching right now, they want to know where they can get Man, in touch. Man, if you locking in with Boss Man Brewster, you rocking with the reform movement on all social media sites, Boss Man Brewster, I'm live and direct. We got from the wreck yard to the streets, that's the transition coming home from prison to the elevation from the streets to the suites. Both books are available on Amazon.com. I'm on all social media platforms. You can hit us at Big Reform. That website will be coming, I'm thinking, within the next week or two. Big shout out to my girl, Laquanya. Rich Marketing. Yeah. Yeah, she had me put it together. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> Voted the number one black show in black barbershops and beauty salons around the world. Sponsored in part by um, Backwoods. Backwoods? Yeah, we smoking on them. Um, sponsored by the 85 South Show. We the only show that's sponsored by our goddamn self. <laughs> Come on, man. That's black as hell. We finance our own shit. Yeah. Bro, we need an 85 South truck. We can make it happen. Let's do it. Man, we can make it happen. All I'm asking is that we put a convicted felon behind the wheel. We're going to provide opportunity for the streets. OK. We in that, whatever city we in, I know once. Uh, Let's do a joint venture. I'm with it. Let's do a joint venture. I put some of what you already got. And then you'll take it and make a hot shot. Send a truck trucking? across the country, bro. So you saying a hot shot Man, or a semi? you can split the money, though. Hold on, hold on. You move fast. I need fast. one of fucking each. <laughs> From the California coast by the beach. Oh, you rapping. We'll get money once a week. Or once a day. Shit, what's the play? Oh, he freestyle. Come on, okay. man. We need to do this shit. Oh, no, I'm telling you. I need, I need to get into the whole industry, but I'm going to do it with you, though. Uh, man, we can lock it low. I can put you on the semis. That's where you're going to make the money at. I'm Listen, man, I want you to just keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to come in, and then you feel what I'm saying? I ain't even in your way. You're going to goddamn slowly walk me through this shit, and then that way we'll take 20 down. and make 50, and then take yeah. 50 and make 100, and then we'll take 100 and make 100 and 50. Then we'll take that out the way and then make that 300, and then we'll turn it into 560, and then 560 will slowly walk us down to about 720. Then next thing you know, by the time we hit a billion, we chilling, bro. He talking numbers. Hell yeah. He went to adding quickly. Hell yeah. I'm telling you, we started off on a low ball. Yeah. We took a 20 and made a 50. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Man, if you trying to get into them trucks, I'm all for that. Yeah. Yeah, you need one. But I know for sure that the real bag gonna come from behind us having them CDL school, because the state gonna pay us for each individual. I'm talking about any state in America. Okay, first off, we need to find, we first one do need to be in Texas, because ain't no state taxes over there. Man, we need to open up a big CDL school in Dallas, Texas. Okay. We, yes, we need to stamp well, this in the culture. It need to be in Dallas and need to be in, it need to be between Dallas and Fort Worth so the Fort Worth niggas can come man, too. Man, listen, man. Cause they ain't gonna come all the way to Dallas. You know man, how they Man, you are. tripping. You got Boss Man Bruce to push a big reform. All we right. gonna have them coming from H-Town, San Antonio, Austin. We don't give a damn what city they okay, in. Okay, bet. We need to make sure we got a CDL school, but this can't be a regulation type school. Oh. It gotta be a CDL school for the culture. Right. Yeah. Hell we gonna yeah. connect it to the system and just like that. Right. Man, we gonna get a bag of money all the way around. Like I say, you gotta look at what I do on my own. All this what you see going on, that's just me and my team making it happen. Shout out, who, you, who on your team? Right, man. You gotta shout the team out. Oh, right, we gotta shout the team out. So. First and foremost, man, I got to give a big shout out to my senior reader. Okay. Uh, you know, she be behind the scenes making things shake, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to give a big shout out to the people in my office at Brewster Logistics, the dispatching department, Judy, Leanne, Wynn. And then I got to give a shout out to my mentors. You know, I'm blessed to have a team, Maurice Green, my pops, Virgil, my big homie, Trey, my big homie, Big Dog. I brought him out here. You know, I'm blessed to have these people around me. Then, uh, you know, my mechanics, it's a lot of moving parts to this. My big homies that, that done see me that I can just call like, hey, bro, how to do, you know? I can hit Donk, like, hey, Donk, I got this situation, how to do this? So the team is heavy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Yeah, the team is, uh, I may be missing a few people, but, and then I can't lie, man, I gotta, I gotta send a big shout out to the streets and the rec yards, man. You know, you can see that they want that breath of fresh air. Yeah, you know and they're they, they gonna, they gonna love that you ain't forgot about them. Yeah, you know, the, the streets, the, I must say, man, that I do get the support and the love of the streets, and then, I, you know, the support of the hip hop community. Yeah. You know, a lot of the artists get behind the movement. You got my boy Longway, my boy Key, my boy Jim Jones. What were some of the prisons you was locked up in? I did 10 years on Barry B. Telford in the last four. Four years was on the stale. Yeah, I done that day for day. Yeah. I left when I was 17, came back going on 32. Whole different mindset. I hope, man, it's time to play ball. You know, right. they used to call me Lil' K. We had to kill that clown so boss man Bruce could evolve. Right. What was your first day out like? Man, you ain't gonna believe me, but I'm gonna tell you, my first day out, we was in the car, man. I asked my people, what's up on the job? They were telling me like, huh, chill, you just, I was like, man, y'all was telling me that uh, when I when I touched down, y'all got me. My girl, I'll never forget this, this real talk. My girl, she say, say, baby, I got enough bread where you can kind of chill for six months, you know, get adjusted back to society. Man, she said that, I looked at her, I said, chill? Man, I just been chilling for almost 14 years. I, I ain't trying to do no chilling. I'm trying to go get a job, man. You told me that when I get out, man, that your people can help me. Like, now y'all acting like, she like, whoa, slow down. I'm going to holler at my dad and them tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm on. So, the, you know, I hit the ground. That's how I came home. I see a lot of people coming home having parties. What we celebrating? You just came home from the penitentiary. You ain't come home from Harvard. What we celebrating? So me coming home wasn't really, I saw this, hey man, I'm here, it's time to get to the business. And that was day one in the back seat, coming out of Hutchinson, where the prison tour just started yesterday. Yeah. That very unit. That's my, that was my first day out of prison. I was on some, hey, what's up with the gig? And my girl told me, I got the bread, man, you can chill for about six months, you know what I'm saying? So you can just ease into it. I said, chill? Man, I've been chilling for almost 14 years, man. I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't finna do that. Y'all told me, man, I just talked to you the other day, last week. When I called home, you told me, man, your daddy gonna be able to, what's up? All right, that's what you wanna do, yeah. I got out on a Monday, as a matter of fact, next week, August the 4th, I make eight years I've been free. Yeah, I got out that Monday, that next following Monday, I was uh, on my way to Coca-Cola. Virgil Pena came and picked me up. I ain't have a car, he told me to be ready at, at, at 4. I was outside at 3.30. Everybody thinking I'm tripping. They like, man, man, I'm ready to get to it. That was my mindset, first day out of prison. Yeah. Yes, sir. How did that go for you? Uh, you know, it had its challenges. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, you know, when you getting out of prison, you kind of got a little like, you know, so I'm in here working, I don't really know how to use the machines. I'm not really computer literate, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm a little embarrassed, a little shy. But you know, hey man, you need to figure this shit out. It's, it's showtime, you have been sitting in there talking, talking all this good shit. You, it's, it's showtime, let's go. So you How know, long it take you to start rocking in that motherfucker though? In the job? It wasn't shit to you. You was a fuck. So up. I got fired you from do that. Do this shit in my sleep, boy. Hey, you something out. I was. I got fired from Coca Cola, but that, that second job where I worked about a good two years. I'ma say it took me about a good two or three months. Yeah. Man, it was nothing. And, and this the look. This the kicker. What they thought was working her, man, that shit wasn't nothing to me. Man, I've been working out twice a day for over 13 years. Man, they ain't, man, I'm running through this. This is nothing to me, hustler. They telling me, hey, slow down. No, I got to go. Me grinding like that, they made me a, a, a lead up in there. That's supervisor position up in there. And I wasn't even trying to do that. Yeah, the work ethic, you know, it don't take long. Not when you really about that action. You know, I just kind of need you to guide me through it a little bit. You know, OJT, on the job training. Give me some on the job training, and uh, I'm, I'm going to bet the house on me. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Where they can find the book at? <clears throat> Man, you can find both books on Amazon.com. It's also a link in all of my bios in my link tree. You can order you a copy. Right. Yes, sir. I see you've been doing a little speaking, too, to the youth and all that. 
Oh yeah, you can book the big reform movement. We pull up. You can lock in, uh, you can email us and uh, get with the team, but yeah, book us, man, we pull up. Yeah. Yeah, we pull up. If you're really trying to touch the culture, you're really trying to bring about real impact, get at us. What you wanna leave them with? Big reform. That's what I'm gonna leave them with. <laughs> Real talk, you ask what I want to leave it with? Big reform, man. Get behind the movement, man. Lock in with your favorite rapper, with your favorite trapper, and all that. Go tell them, man. Come get at us. Hey, man, I know this is your first time through the trail. But, dog, uh, I just enjoy talking with you, man. Oh, That's yeah, man. That's a hell of a conversation, man. Next time you come, we ain't going to talk no business. We just going to rap. We can kick it next time. Man, this, this, this right here was This is the intro. This is just the intro. I right. wanted the people to know that we tapped in with them and we see who y'all want us to bring to the platform and we listening to y'all man so you got to shout out to all the people who follow you because they've been really on it oh man man that's a big shout out to the reform movement man y'all know we talking heavy game we touching the culture we being about the action we don't want to talk about it we want to be about it continue to support us man Hey man, and do me one more favor. What's up? All the people who watching who want to get in touch with you for real about that truck and shit, give them the info one more time. Lock in on all my social media sites, Boss Man Brewster. You can also email us at BrewsterTrucking101.com or you can book us at Reform.com. And we're not going to do this shit. Without saying, shout out to Donkey, because that nigga you everywhere. You got to say, hey, man. <laughs> My boy, don't tell me, hey, man, no compromise, man. Big shout out to bro, uh, Dunk, one of the solid ones, man. Bro got God all over. And you know what's crazy, bro? Every time I see him in my head, I always hear, treated him like he was doggy and he told him. <laughs> <them." laughs> <laughs> it just, shit just, it just automatic, man. Hey, boss, man, we in the trap with it. Ah. 85 South Show. Ah. Bro, man, we appreciate you, man. Be reform, man. Be reform. Stay right there. Let's take a picture, man. Get some real flat. Hold the book up, man. Grab one of them. Which one you got? I agree with this one then. Hold up. Give me that one. Yes, sir. Oh, you got it. 